your glory that's in this atmosphere right now. Lord, on this beautiful Sunday, Lord God, we give you thanks. Lord, this is the day that you have made. And Father, we will rejoice and be glad in this day. God, someone was not allowed to see this morning, but we did, and so we thank you. Someone woke up with pain that they can't get rid of, but Lord, we don't. We thank you. Father, someone's restricted today, but we're not. We thank you. Father, your glory is in the place right now, Lord God. It is your glory, Lord God, that we're standing under right now. Father, we pray today that your word would be that beaming light in our path, Lord God. Lord, we pray for the word to encourage and to strengthen and to lift. We pray that the word would bless, Lord God, elevate, multiply, and cause your kingdom, God, to expand in the earth. Father, we serve notice on any forces of darkness right now that have tried to harm, hurt, or stop us. Lord, we thank you today that you have already given us the victory. Victory belongs to us in Christ Jesus right now. And so, Father, with arms lifted up toward you, we surrender to your will. We surrender to what you say. We surrender to who you are. We surrender to your plan. And we thank you, God, this day that you shall be glorified. You shall be glorified in our lives and through our lives. This world shall never be the same because, God, you changed us. And so, Father, we just give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a great big praise offering as you take your seats today. Someone shout glory to your name, God. Say that again. Shout glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God for all that are here. We thank God for each of you and we praise God for the presence of him being in this place, being all over the room now. And I ask that you guys be open to the will of the Spirit today because God wants to pour inside of you. How many want to receive today? Amen. So we do give honor to God for his goodness. We thank God for a time of just sincere praise and worship. And to all those that are watching, wherever you are, both near and far, from this continent, all over the world, we bless you. We thank you for being a part today of the broadcast. We ask that you would just receive the word of God now as we prepare to go in today to bless God's people. How many know that this is the day that God has made? But how many know that tomorrow will be that same day? He's made tomorrow too. If, if tomorrow comes, he's the one that made tomorrow come. Amen? So I don't just want you to give God thanks and praise on Sundays when we ask you to. I want you to give God thanks and praise every day because he's God. Amen? Someone just say he is God, and beside him, there is none other. Hallelujah. Well, praise God to you today. Amen. How many ready for the word? Well, let's go into the word of God today. Let's begin by first acknowledging and saying a blessed, happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers out there here that are in the sanctuary now, to those that are watching, happy blessed Mother's Day to all. Amen. Let's give God thanks for our mothers today. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I know that Mother's Day is a day that we set aside to acknowledge mothers, but I believe that should be an everyday job for all of us because they sure carried us for nine months. Some of us, seven and a half, eight months. Some of you, maybe nine and a half months. I don't know, but... They carried you guys, and so we, we all are here today because of a mother. And so I just always take this time to think about that, even to those that don't have their mothers with them right now. I acknowledge that as well, that because she's not here in the flesh does not mean she's not here in the spirit. Amen? And so to those of you that are celebrating Mother's Day without your mother, God is with you. Amen? And the presence of your mother is still inside of you. You know why? Because you were inside of her. God ordained it that way, and so we give God thanks. I never want to get so excited that we celebrate the mothers here and forget about the mothers that have gone on to be with God. And, you know, I always remember, and I have great mothers, a mother and mother-in-law. I thank God for them. And uh, I thank God, too. There are other two other special ladies in my life uh, that really shaped me as a young, young lad. They were my godmothers. Amen. And I thank God both of them are gone on many, many years ago to be with God. But both of my godmothers were God-fearing ladies. Amen? Yes. 
And I tell you, they would get on me when I looked like I wanted to go wrong. They would get on me. Amen. I mean, one godmother would lay hands on me regardless if I did something right or wrong. She would lay hands. If I just go by to say hello to God, my, hey, God, my, how you doing today? Stop. Let me pray for you right now. And she would pray, no hurt, harm, or danger come up on me, seen or unseen, wherever I go, on the bike, walking around, whatever it was, before I touched the door. Now, nah, let me pray for you, boy. Amen. And so we thank God for those mothers that impacted all of our lives. And so I want to uh, encourage you with a couple of quotes today before we go deep into the word of God uh, to all the mothers and mother figures and Christ-like women of God. Here's what a woman, Sally Clarkson, once wrote. She said these words, a mother's relationship with her child is one that will encompass a lifetime. How blessed is a child who has that anchor of strength and support. And I believe that us as children understand that our mothers definitely were our anchors. They were our biggest support systems through life, even when we were wrong. Can I get amen to that? Even some of us maybe were behind bars. They still supported you. Through mistakes, through all the mishaps. And so this was a very encouraging quote because they are and were that anchor that always keeps you grounded. Something about the eyes of a mother. And I remember back in the day going through church as a little lad sitting in the back seat when I was allowed to sit in the back of the church. I mean allowed. Whenever there was a hint of mischievousness going on. Her eyes would turn around. I could feel her eyes burn through everything else and get right. And sometimes the church would be jam-packed, crowded, and somehow she would find exactly where I was. I'm like, man, I can't get away with nothing. But that was support. That was saying, you're not going that other direction, boy. Son, you're going to go this direction. But here's another quote I want to share with you by uh, Andy Stanley, a pastor in Georgia. He said, your greatest contribution, this is talking to the mothers today, your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God might not be something you do, but someone you raised. Sometimes we look for the material things. Sometimes we look for the reward in a house or money or career. But I do believe that the greatest contribution, mothers, that you've ever given to this world is you've birthed that child. Amen? So if you ever think you didn't achieve anything else or you're worthless in this life, no, you're not. You birthed a son or a daughter that has the power and the ability to impact this world for the kingdom of God. So I want everyone to stand on their feet and give mothers a standing ovation today. Whether your mother is here, whether she's gone to be with God, I would like for you that are watching, just clap your hands and give all the mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, spiritual mothers, mothers that have just sacrificed their lives, give them a standing ovation and just say, Mom, we love you. Come on, say, Mom, we love you. You may have your seats in the presence of God. Thank you, anchors. Thank you, dedicated women. Some of you even did it alone. You did it. Some of you are doing it alone. You will get through it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you get tired and you get weak and you get a little bit overcome with this world. But I'm telling you, there's a strength that comes upon you like none other. If you had strength to carry us for nine months, then you got strength to carry us for 90 years. Luke chapter number one, verses 41 through 42. We want to go to our word today. It, it, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Let me say this here. I don't care what the devil tried to do. Your womb was blessed. I don't care what you think the world has done to your son or daughter. Your womb was blessed. And the fruit that came from your womb is blessed. And so I reverse every word that's been spoken over every son or daughter that condemned them to hell or that condemned them to jail or that condemned them to some crime. I reverse that right now in the name of Jesus. You came out of the womb blessed and blessed shall you be in Jesus name.
Can I get amen to that? And so that's the word of the Lord today. And I want to share with you from the word of the Lord today what the God has given me to be a blessing, not just to mothers, but to women all over the world and even to strengthen the men that stand next to and with these women of God. Amen. And so I want to just take you back in time for just a little bit back in the year 1998. Is there anyone here that was born in the year 1998 or born uh, around that time? You was alive. Let me put it that way. Anyone here that was alive? All right. So the majority sitting here today was alive in 1998. Now, no one is telling her age, so I just said, uh, you know, you're around that time, 1998, you were in this world, so we don't want to tell anyone's age. But in 1998, um, there was this, this uh, movie that came out. It was kind of a, it was a comedy movie, and uh, sometimes we still get tickled about it, my wife and I. We giggle and laugh a little bit, but it starred a couple of different people. Some of the names you might know, one of them was called Cameron Diaz, another one was Ben Stiller, another one was called uh, Matt Dillon. How many remember those actors and actresses? In this movie, there were several men that were infatuated by this one woman. I mean, from the day of prom, the ruffled shirts, the bell bottoms, and, you know, the corsages you wear around your wrist. And and so you go through time, and even after prom into the adult years, there were men that went to great distances just to get with this woman. They went to great extents, and they were mesmerized by her charm. They were mesmerized by her presence. It was something about her life that just drew people to her. And when they got to her, they were just so like like butter. They just wanted to just melt because something about her continence. And this woman finally, after trying to be dated or courted by several different men, she finally got to the point at the end of the movie She landed on one man, and his name was called Ted. How many remember Ted? And if you remember that movie, the name of that movie was called There's Something About Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you to Luke chapter 1 today, and from the spiritual side, I want to tell you that there is something about Mary. There's something unique about the woman Mary in the Bible, why God would choose Mary above all other women on the face of this earth. You remember the movie, something about Mary. I mean, men were looking silly trying to get to this one woman. I mean, they were doing things that were just just crazy just to, just to get a glimpse of being her presence. And I'm telling you that God knew a woman named Mary before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah, someone. Maybe, mom, you don't think you matter anymore, but no, God knew you from the foundation of the world. You were chosen by God, and here, before the foundation of the world, there was Mary in the Bible who was chosen by God to carry his precious son. Someone say with me, there's something about Mary. Say it again, there's something about Mary. Well, today, we're going to find out what that something is. And when you find out what that something is, you're going to also find out it's in you too. Say that with me. It's in me too. The Bible in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. Paul writes to the church of Galatians, he says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. Why did he do that? Verse 5 gives us the answer. To redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. But when the fullness of time was come, the Bible says, what what was in God or what God had in Mary, God knew that the fullness of time had now come. What does that mean to you? That God understood that there was a certain time in the world that he was going to now identify Mary and he was going to zone in on Mary from the foundation of the earth. He said, Mary, your time has come to fulfill my plan as the mother of my son. And I know that things happen in this world, but nothing ever surprises God. Even to the worst extents of birth, it still is not a surprise to God. 
For what we count as something negative, God turns it around something grand. I wish you could understand and could ever know, and maybe one day in heaven we will get to know that as many as people that have been raped and molested and gone through stuff and have bear these sons and daughters through that catastrophic event, you're going to find out in heaven that those babies turn out to be awesome men and women of God. Amen. To the worst of birth, God said, I will make sure because he was the one that designed birth. And let me just put this plug in there. Nobody can change it. Say with me, nobody can change God's plan. So the Bible says when the fullness of time had come, what was it that God placed in Mary that now time came into place with purpose? For us today and many mothers listening to me right now, that time and purpose is getting ready to hit hand in hand for you this afternoon. What does that mean for you? Well, God has handpicked you for such a time as this. And I know we use that in Esther's days, but it means for us right now. And so it was directly at this time that God had put something in Mary before she was even in the earth. God already designed something. So when Mary came from her mother, Mary was already carrying the plan of God. All right? Does that make sense? And so when Mary was going on minding her business and was betrothed to a man named Joseph, never had sex with no man but just living her life, God knew that. And God is saying, there's something inside of you that I put there that you don't even know that's there. And I believe today that mothers, there is a, 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 an amount of strength and amount of just a stableness that God is putting you that you don't even know how strong you really are. How many know the strength of a backhand from a mom? put my hand up first it's something about the quickness of a backhand that you don't see coming what am I saying to you that God infuses strength and speed in a mother that you don't see coming somehow some way mom knows when you did it mom knows when you're guilty mom knows when you're right mom knows when you're wrong God did something for Mary that although she was walking the earth as a virgin lady, as a virgin girl, minding her business, God now said the time has come for the plan now to be fulfilled. Purpose is hitting time, and now I'm going to give you the seed that's going to save the world. What if the seed that was in you that someone tried to curse was the answer to COVID-19? Many things that we've cursed, many things that we've kicked to the curb are the answer, are the antidote for our problem. God does not look for the high and mighty. He takes things that have been kicked in the dirt. But what was it that God placed in Mary that drew him to her at that particular time? Say with me, she was blessed and highly favored. In Luke chapter 1, verse 28, the Bible says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hell, not H-E-L-L, -L, Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. That angel came and he said, listen, Mary, you are highly favored and you are blessed by God. There is mothers out there that need to know that God has highly favored you and that God has blessed you beyond measure. Do not take for granted that God has put something inside of you called favor that gives you a direct connection with God as if God was standing in front of you face to face. And so I believe that when you look at these words, the angel said to her, highly favored. He said to her, and I had to just, I had to think about this for a moment. He said, you have an overabundance of God's grace on your life. You've been empowered by God to do what you do. This is what the angel told Mary, because that's what highly favored means. He said, God has given you an overabundance amount of grace. How many know that it would take grace to walk the same streets and walk, watch people talk about her? Because now, 
Here she was, a virgin, and now she is pregnant and still hadn't touched no man. No man touched her. But God said through the angel, you are highly favored. There is an empowerment over your life that I am going to give you the strength and the ability to do what I need done in this earth. And how many know that your job is not done after nine months is over? That many people think that, okay, Mary, you did your job. No, Mary still had a job to do. She still had to raise that son. She still had to train him up. She still had to take him to the synagogue. She still had to show him God's will. And I want to let you know that Mary did her job well. And then he also told her that you are blessed. And what that means is, is that the angel said to her, Gabriel said, listen, you are to be spoken well of and praised did you hear what I said ladies you are to be spoken well of and to be praised so if no one else praised you today I praise you if no one else celebrated you today I celebrate you someone say well God gets to pray no God decides also to share his praise of who he wants and the Bible talks about a man shall praise his wife Matter of fact, let's go there. Proverbs 31. So you know I'm not talking outside of the Bible, but according to the Bible. You are to be spoken well of and to be praised, women. Proverbs 31 and 28. You know this, the virtuous woman chapter, right? He said, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he what? Praiseth her. How many of us are children today of somebody? You might be a young child, you might be an older child, but you are a child of somebody. So I need every child of somebody to arise and shout the word, you are blessed. The Bible says her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also calls her blessed. Her husband praises her. And so when I look at what Gabriel came and told Mary, he said, listen, you have an un." questionable amount of power in your life that God has graced you for this time that all you got to do is get up and live your life because God has favored you and blessed you there is a power on you that people are going to praise you they might curse you now but they're going to praise you later they might talk about you now but they're going to thank you later I don't know about you, but many days growing up, man, I was upset at my mom. Why you got to show up for parent-teachers conference? Nobody else's mother did. Why do you got to show up for the game? No one else's mom showed up. Why do you got to be the one to look at it? Why, why can't I go out with my friends afterwards? No, you get in this car. I'm taking you home. Anybody remember those days? Mom, can I spend the night? No. And he's spending the night, they're going to come here. I know who they are. I know who their mama is. I know their grandma. I know where they go to church. I know where they live. All those things made a difference in anchoring your life. Amen, someone. And so the angel was telling Mary, don't worry because God's got you. What was it that Mary had that's also in you? That's the question today. There's something about Mary. And I want to tell you what that something is. Look at Luke 1, 37 and 38. Here's what the word says. It says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed her. What was in Mary that is in you? That we can answer the question today, that's the something about Mary. Well, the first thought that the Lord shows me is that when you read the scripture, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. I see, first of all, a handmaid of the Lord. 
There's something about Mary that she became a handmaid of the Lord. What is a handmaid? She was a female slave or totally submitted to the one over her. Mary said, now, angel didn't say this. Mary said this. Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. What is a handmaid? A handmaid at that time, ladies and gentlemen, is considered the lowest form of a servant of that culture. So Mary agreed. She said, I am the lowest form of a servant, but God, I'm serving you. According to the world, I'm a low person. According to the world, I'm the type of person that no one seeks after. I'm the type of person that people see but don't see. I'm the type of person that no one has nothing to say, nothing about until they think something is wrong. How many know nobody had nothing to say to Mary until she started the show? It's like our world today. Soon as something negative happened, phones start to blow up. People start to talk. If the first thing you do is talk, then you're making a mistake. Because anything that happens in this world, the first thing we need to do is stop and pray. Because when you pray, God will censor your own heart first. When you pray, God will check you and say, listen, before you start throwing stone at someone else, check your own glass house. Before you start talking about other people's children and how they look and the kind of clothes they have and how they this and that, make sure that your own house is in order. She was the lowest kind of person. No one wanted nothing to do with her. But Joseph saw something in her. And even Joseph was like, whoa, what's going on here? I didn't touch her. I'm innocent. This don't look right, Mary. What's going on here, Mary? And Mary knew, and the Bible says she had something she pondered in her heart. She thought about these things. She understood something about God. She was a handmaid of the Lord. The Bible said that's what she said. She said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. She said, bid unto me according to thy word. This made her great in God's sight because she didn't appear to be someone great in the world. She said, I'm just a mere servant. God, if you decide to choose me to carry your son, I don't have an answer for it. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know how you did it that now my stomach is growing and this boy is starting to kick inside of me. But be it unto you according to your word, God. She lived a life that was totally surrendered to God. You want to know that first thing about Mary that's in you? A handmaid of the Lord. How many know that when you are that true woman of God, you are a servant of the living God? And when you are a servant of God, it doesn't matter what people think. I like to make you smile and think about things naturally because it brings the word to home. When you had a real mother, they didn't care about embarrassing you in the world with your friends. They weren't worried about using the right words. They weren't worried about being light. They weren't what? When something was wrong, they spoke out. When something was happening, wait a minute, you are not going to talk to my son or daughter that way. I, I will whip them at home, but you're not going to do that to them in public. Anyone have a mother like that or a grandmother like that? There was something about the women of that time and even today that those lives that are totally surrendered to God, they, they might be meek and humble, but they're not doormats. They're going to speak up. You, we are servants of the Lord. We are handmaids, but you will not walk over us. Guess what, mothers? You might be like Mary. Maybe you don't get the recognition that you think you deserve. Maybe your husband isn't praising you at the gate. Maybe for some reason your children aren't rising up calling you blessed. But I want to remind you that you are still a servant of the Lord. That if man don't praise you, God is still blessing you. If your children forsake you, your God is still there to make a way for you. What pains my heart sometimes is that the elderly, they get older and children are nowhere to be found. I'm saying I don't care how bad it was. You still have a job to do. 
You still need to arise and call them blessed and tend to their needs. And so, women, you are still great in the eyes of God. Doesn't matter what kind of mother you said you had. God gave you the mother that you had. Amen? How many had a choice in the mother you got? But God said the fruit of your womb is blessed. How many know that you are blessed even though you don't feel like you're blessed? But there is something else that Mary did that blessed me so much. Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. You want to understand something powerful about women and something about Mary is that it's something about Mary and it's something about you that you still believe in miracles. Does anyone here today still believe in miracles? Do you believe that God can still work a miraculous thing in your life? See, the Bible said that Mary said, be it unto you, me, according to whatever you said, God. I believe that was a miracle birth. That wasn't a natural birth, saints. Man cannot take credit for what God was doing. And so she had to come into agreement with a miracle from heaven. And so she said, be it unto me, according to thy word. She believed. Now catch this here. The Lord really blessed me with this. She believed and God said, your womb has just become the holy of holies. Do you understand what the Holy of Holies is and was? It hosted the very presence of God. And so God said, your womb is now the Holy of Holies. You are hosting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are hosting the Savior, the Healer, the Deliverer. You are hosting the Almighty God. Someone shout, that's a miracle. For nine months, she had the presence of God. Now I know why David erupted so much praise when he began to escort the presence of the Ark of the Covenant back into the city of David. I could imagine that Jesus being in that womb, I would have danced every single day. If you tell me that Jesus is in my womb and I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to just praise God like I got no sense. And Mary, with the presence of God, she believed no matter what. And I began to really ponder on this thought. I said, man, she believed in miracles in spite of the odds, in spite of the circumstances around us. Like Mary, you got to believe that your son or daughter, God can turn things around if they're out there. Let me talk to someone that knows what I'm saying today. Because maybe, you know, your sons and daughters are in Prell, Yale, Princeton, and Harvard, studying the medical degree and all that. But there are some sons that are incarcerated. There are some daughters that have been incarcerated. There are some people that are going through these things that they don't know where their sons and daughters are. But how many know that those real Mary women still believe in miracles? That God can turn their life around. That God can reach them in the gutter. God can reach them in the lowest parts of hell. God can reach them in the prison cell. God can reach them on a corner. God can reach them in a club. Wherever they are, God can reach them. And Mary believed in miracles. There was something about Mary that although it was impossible, but what's impossible to man is possible with God. So are there any Mary mothers here today that still believe in the miraculous power of God? You have to believe that the fruit of your womb is blessed. Even though the world is big enough building a bigger jail cell for your son. Even though you've seen many mothers crying on the news and saying, why did they take my son or daughter. The real part of life is, is that there will be the pains of, of losing a son or a daughter or losing that close loved one. But the blessed mother says, I still believe in miracles because the next miracle is going to be on resurrection day. You're not hearing me today. When the last trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ are going to rise. How many know that it's going to be a miracle before the eyes of the world that what went down buried is going to rise up alive? What went down sick is going to rise up healed? What went down messed up is going to rise up whole and have a new body that meets them in the air? Someone shout, that's a miracle. 
What am I saying to you, Mary Mothers, that you might not see the miracle with your physical eyes right now, but one day you're going to see the miracle of your birth. Well, you might not see it today or you might see it today, but if you don't see it in this life, you're going to know that you raised a son or daughter of God. I don't care what the world has done to them. I don't care about the injustice. I don't care about the racial discrimination. I don't care about all the cultural bars and all the barriers. God is still working miracles. Saints of God, you will walk into a room and the room has to change because your presence is there. You will speak and people are going to know that the miraculous power of God is here. So let me tell you something right now. Many of you have birthed miracles. And some of you are in a line for a miracle right now. I'm going to say it again. Many of you have birthed miracles, but the world will not give you credit for the miracle that you birthed. You made it through all those years. You made it through when you were abandoned. You made it through when you had no money. You made it through when you were down. You made it through through every situation. You made it through with a miracle. But then I also want to encourage someone today that some of you are getting ready to receive a miracle right now. God is going to shine the light on your situation. God is going to open the door to a new day. God is going to show you that you are not left alone. You are not valueless. You are not left without. That God has provision for you right now. You and your sons and your family and your daughters shall be blessed in Jesus name. I strongly believe that that miracle working power works. You just got to believe. And men, we got to understand that when God works through a woman, don't try to usurp authority. Don't try to go, let God use her because she's at your side. What she gets, you get too. One thing I learned early in life, and if you learn this lesson, men, please shout amen. I learned that if you treat your wife wrong, you hinder your prayers. Why is this going on? Why is this happening? How are you treating your wife? We need a miracle. Why is the miracle not happening? What did your mouth say? The quickest way to open up the door for a miracle for a married couple is to treat your spouse right. It's not to come to church all the time. It's not to pay your bills on time. It's to treat your spouse right. You open up the door for a miracle. Come on, someone. When Joseph was ready to put Mary away, no, the main, no, you can't do that. Joseph went through with it, and Joseph treated Mary right. And Joseph, go, Joseph is not talked about enough in this world. Joseph, you took the shame and all that for nine months, and you raised that boy. You taught him all the trade. You taught him how to build that stuff. Can I tell you something that's powerful about the man? Joe, he taught him how to speak in such parables that when he said, listen, take of me my yoke. My yoke is easy. Burton is life. It was Joseph that taught him how to build a yoke. So the words that he would speak came from the teachings that came from his home. I'll come back to that on, Mother, on Father's Day. Stay tuned for Father's Day, fathers. But I don't want to get away, get in the way of a miracle. I don't want to be the reason why a miracle don't come to my house. I don't want to be the reason why things start stop flowing the way they should because I stopped doing what I should be doing. And so, ladies, you got to believe in miracles. But there, there's one more thing I want to tell you, and I want you to get excited about this, as excited as I am here. We look at Luke. Go back to our text there, Luke 1, 41 through 42. And let, let, let the Bible just speak to you, and I want you to see something about Mary that is in you today. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. What is going on here? Well, let me tell you something. There's something about Mary. What was that something? She was anointed with the power of God. How do we know that she had the power of God? Well, the Bible said that she just spoke to Elizabeth. Hello. And Elizabeth, now catch this verse. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then the baby caught the Holy Ghost. I shouldn't say caught the Holy Ghost. The baby was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> In other words, your hello could open up the door for a Holy Ghost baptism party. You want to tell me that we need to hook them and shy and throw oil and lay hands all day for someone to get the Holy Ghost? No, I'm going to start saying hello. 
God bless you. Hello, Elizabeth. And all of a sudden, the very words that came out of her mouth were filled with the power of God that when it got to Elizabeth, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And not only was she filled with the Holy Ghost, but the baby felt something in her mom. And the baby, John the Baptist, began to leap in the womb like, what is going on here? I'm ready to come out. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to dance because I'm filled with something different here, mom. Can you imagine John the Baptist saying, I got to get out of here now. Reaching and moving. What was going on here? Mary birthed out of her mouth the power of God. The anointing upon her life had a direct effect on the people around her. There's something about Mary and there's something about you that when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have a direct effect. I don't care how much of what bad you've been treated or what you've been talked about as. It's something about you that when you open up your mouth as a woman of God. Man, as I remember growing up back in the day, I would ask my mom to pray for me. And she would grab my hands. And I'm expecting a nice prayer to come forth. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. I'm gone. I said, man. But I remember many days when I was sick in pain and I would go and say, Mom, can you pray for me? I was healed immediately. And I would say, whoa, what's going on here? She would just speak. And ladies, you have the word of God and the power of God inside of you. That God has released that in you. That if you just open up your mouth under the anointing of God, that people around you will come into the presence of God. That if you look at what the Bible says, Mary was going to visit her, her cousin Elizabeth. And they were going to celebrate. Well, yes, and this is what Gabriel said. Elizabeth was already pregnant. And now here comes Mary and said, hey, Elizabeth, oh, God. How many of you know that the power of God will interrupt your picnic? The power of God will interrupt your vacation. The power of God will interrupt your family reunion and all that stuff. The power of God came forth. And what God was saying at that moment is, he's saying that this is the moment that I wanted to fill Elizabeth, but I wanted to fill John the Baptist. And let me tell you something right now. That I know that our sons and daughters, are all, we're all born into sin and shaped in iniquity. But I also understand this here, that if a child dies and does not have no understanding of who God was or who God is, that they're not going to hell, they're going to be with God. And so I believe this today that many of us are here right now because we had that mother, that godmother, that grandmother, some mother around our life that prayed for us, that encouraged us, that spoke good things around us, that when you came in their presence, it was just one word. I don't know about you, but I made a good living, and I don't mean making money, but I made a good life out of spending time around the elderly women, and I would just, they would just speak one word. Hello, how you doing, baby? How you doing, son? Make sure you stick with God, son. Make sure you honor your wife, son. Make sure you work son make sure you provide for your home son make sure you preach the word of God it's just simple words that changed the life and sometimes we look and we think we need to do all these elaborate things that the world do no just encourage your son or daughter all you got to do is open up your mouth before they go to school and just shout out the word blessed come on someone when they get out of your car to walk to those school doors blessed Bless them, God. Watch over them, God. Keep them, God. Angels, keep being kept around them, God. Let the blood of Jesus cover them, God. Whatever you do, just release the word. You don't have to go into a long dissertation. Just shout out, Jesus be with them. See, there's something that happens when you shout out the right things. You're shouting out, but God now takes the breath and the words that come out out of our lungs, from our stomach, through our heart, goes through us, and he takes the word and he now combines it with his power. And by the time it gets to the ears of who it's supposed to get to, the Holy Ghost unfilled that word. That's why sometimes you can sit in a service and you can be just as calm and cool, but one word goes forth and all of a sudden that word was just for you. And it's like, bam, it hits. And all of a sudden on the way it got to you, uh, from that speaker, from the amplification, it gets into your ears and God said, bam, that's the word that you read right now. Everyone else is like, what's going on? No, that word had been packed, wrapped up in tissue paper, neatly with a bow around it. 
and it was delivered, handpicked for you. And when it got for you, the Holy Ghost opened it up for you. The Holy Ghost took everything out of it and he said, here is your gift. And when it got into your heart, it connected with everything that you were dealing with or needed to hear and it changed your life. And this is what happened with Elizabeth. Everything that Elizabeth needed to hear at that moment was just the voice of Mary just speak to her. And the Holy Ghost said, thank you. All I needed was a voice. Do you understand that's what God said? All I need is a body. Make me a body and I'll go. And I'll go and I'll speak to this world. And so God wants to use mothers to release today, I believe, a fresh power of the Holy Ghost. You know, I've learned something in life. You want to change things in life? Change your home. Anyone agree with that? You want to change the situation in our school system? Change your home. Because if they leave your home blessed... The next place they're going to go, that blessing is going to be upon them. So whether they're trying to add curriculum that don't mix with the word of God, when you step into the room, for some reason the teacher had to call in sick that day and a substitute teacher showed up that was supposed to teach something, but they couldn't teach that something because the power of God was in your son or daughter that sat there. We need days like that right now. We need times like that right now. And I want you to be anointed today with that same power that when you speak over your sons and daughters, wherever they go, whatever they do, that thing is still in them. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. They might go to Timbuktu, but they're still going to hear your voice. Mama used to say. Remember that song? Take your time, young man. Mama used to say, don't you rush to get old. Mama said a lot of stuff back in the day, didn't it? And how many know what mama said? A lot of those things are still coming to pass. Mothers, you have the power of your word. I want you to stand with me today. All you mothers, I want you to stand with me because there's something inside of you. There's something about Mary, but there's also something about you. I take you back to that 1998 film, Something About Mary. What attracted all those men to do crazy things with that one woman? Her outside beauty and charm. But what is it that God has put inside of you to attract the world? The blessings, the favor, and the power of God. So mothers, I want to be a blessing to you today. How many mothers want to receive a blessing? I know you asked that question. I guess. That's the first thing. First things first. So if you're a mother today, you in this section, you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eight of you, come stand right here across this front. I'm about to release some power on you guys. Don't be scared. Scared on out. Spread on out. Spread on out all across the altar. Just, yep, just, yeah, give yourself some room. Amen. All right. That is, yeah, yeah, there you go. You got room? There was something about Mary, and there's something about you. God wants to release fresh power upon your life. That whatever your mouth used to say, and I'm not saying it was bad because you good women are filled with God's spirit. You're good women. But God is now going to add power even greater to what you've been saying. God is going to add strength to the words you've been saying. But first of all, I want you to just search your heart and make sure what you've been saying has been God all the time. And if you're honest, like all of us are, no, it hasn't always been God. So first of all, I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord. Inside of me, if there is anything that I've spoken or said against your will, I remove it and I place it at your feet. I am now a greater candidate for the fresh power of the Holy Ghost. You believe that? How many of you know that our worlds are framed by the words that we speak? Mary had a choice. Mary could have said, no, I ain't going through with this. This can't be possible. No way. No. But no, she said, according to your word, Lord, be it unto me. Those of you that are here right now on this altar, you have sons, you have daughters. 
I want you to believe that the words that you speak, even over your husband, even over that, that man, that, that husband of yours, you speak and the world change. So I want you to lift your hands before the Lord where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Mia, come step right to Father, in Jesus' name, I release the fresh power of the Holy Ghost upon this woman of God right now. In Jesus' name, come like a rushing mighty wind today. In Jesus, blow upon her, Father. Fresh wind, fresh anointing right now, Lord God. Lord, let her mouth speak of your glory. In Jesus' name. Sister Nancy. Father, I release the glory on a greater measure right now. Lord, let the word be spoken, God, but add your power to it now. In Jesus' name. Stay at the altar. Sister Mia, stay here. Just take two couple steps forward. Come like a rushing mighty wind. Lord God, add to the word that comes out of her mouth the power and the strength, God, to change world, to change lives in Jesus' name. Father, according to your word, be it unto her right now. For what's impossible with man is possible with God. And we speak it right now in Jesus' name, Lord God. Yes, yes. The word is added now with power in Jesus' name. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Sister Lynn, take a step forward. I'm going to remove your glasses for you. Is that okay? Father, in Jesus' name. The very next words that come out of her mouth, God, to her children, to her grandchildren, to all around in her family, Lord God, shall be blessings and favor. Worlds shall be changed by the release of the word right now. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray right now that worlds are changed, Lord God. Destinies are changed, Lord God. Lives are changed right now in Jesus' name. Father, new words, new life. New life, new attitude. New attitude, new heart. Father, in Jesus' name, fresh wind and fresh anointing right now. I release upon her now in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Ghost. Take over this temple right now. Take over this temple right now. The fight is over. God, you're the all-time reigning champion of every heart and mind. Take over this temple in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Take your glasses. Holy Ghost, come like a rushing mighty wind. Lord, take over the tongue right now, Lord God. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, Father, I speak to the heart right now, and the mouth shall flow likewise, O oh God. That power and anointing shall come forth in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, right now, in Jesus' name. Father, I release a fresh wind of the anointing right now, Lord God, to be upon this woman of God now. Lord, let the word, Lord, come forth bold and with power in this hour in Jesus name thank you God thank you God in Jesus name Father I release right now a word oh God that would penetrate the heart Father out of the abundance of the heart again that mouth speaks and so Father I thank you that you've created in her a clean heart and the right mind is in her now Father the words she speak, there should be both spirit and life in Jesus' name. Father, I release right now life to what's been spoken is death. I release life, God. To what's been bruised, I speak life now. Father, the words that come forth now shall be bold as a lion. And God, I thank you in Jesus' name for the power of God. Any mothers on this side?
Say with me, I confess anything that is not like you, God, that's been spoken out of my mouth, I give it to you right now. I am now a candidate for the Holy Ghost power through my life in Jesus' name. Father, I release life right now. Lord, as she speaks, you arm the words with power and anointing. God, I release supernatural strength and ability over her life in Jesus' name. Lord God, to be that woman filled with the Holy Ghost and speaks over her son and daughter, Lord God, life in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, I release life from the vessel right now standing before your presence. Lord God, Lord, you will arm the word now with power. What proceeds out of her mouth shall bless, shall build and advance and encourage. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the Holy Ghost shall be released upon her with fresh power. In Jesus' name, we thank you right now. We thank you right now, God, that all things become new. Father, in Jesus' name, every word that's been spoken out of season, out of time, we realign it to the will of God right now. And so, God, she speaks life over everything, God, that has come at her, Lord God. Life in the midst of all hell that have tried to destroy, Lord God. Life right now, God, to encourage the family, Lord God. Life to encourage the grandchildren in Jesus' name. Life in the spirit in Jesus name if you're a mother you want to come in this section you can just come up to this area here sister Mia God wanted to give you a double portion father I release a double portion right now over her life in the name of Jesus God, the fight for her life, the fight for her mind, the fight for her heart, Lord God. Uh, we wage war against all forces of darkness right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled. God, fill her tongue right now. Fill her tongue, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. A new tongue. A new tongue. A new tongue. God, we've given it to you. And so today, Lord God, I release upon this vessel a fresh anointing of your spirit. Lord God, even as there was something about Mary, there'll be something about this woman of God that's unique, changed, and different. That she becomes a vessel yielded to you, Lord God, in this hour. That power be, uh, will become upon her, Lord God, uh, from heaven. That will endure her, Lord, like never before. God, uh, her words, God, will be spirit and life. They will break through the hardest of hearts in Jesus' name. God, we thank you now. Be it for your glory. Be it for your glory. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, you said you framed the world by the words that you spoke. And so, God, I speak over this mother right now that she frames and reframes the world over, Lord God, her children, over her life, over, Lord, all those around her. Lord, with the Spirit right now, fill her, God, fresh, anew. Bless this mother in Jesus' name. Life, I speak. I cancel death. I cancel darkness. I release the beaming light of Christ in Jesus' name. Mother, I bless you right now. And I release Holy Ghost power upon your life. I release a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit this very second. That God, the words that she speak, God, the earth shall feel the reverb of the things that come out of her mouth, God, because it's anointed of you. And so God, release it upon her today, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Father, in Jesus' name, let there be a fresh, a new, that awakens upon this vessel right now. That God, the word that she speaks out of her mouth, God, shall change nations, cultures, shall break through boundaries and limitations, shall cut through all borders and cut through all walls in Jesus' name. Father, I release a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost upon her right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for a fresh filling of your spirit. Be it upon this vessel right now. God, anoint her tongue to speak life. I replace death, I replace darkness with the spirit of light right now. In Jesus' name. Light be. Light be. Light be. And the Bible says, and there was light. And I speak it in Jesus' name. Father, I release a fresh filling of your spirit. To all the words, God, that have been spoken in season or out of season, God, I thank you today that there is life and life is in the blood of Jesus. And so, God, by the precious blood of Jesus right now, I release a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost, baptized right now with fire in Jesus' name. Burn it up, God. Burn it up, God. And God, replace it all with a fresh zeal, fresh words. Life in Jesus' name. Life in Jesus' name. Anyone I miss, just we can come this way. Yep. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, I speak life. Lord, I thank you that now begins a fresh filling of your spirit. Even as the angel visited Mary, she said, be it unto me. Father, we say be it unto her right now. This second in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost, fire be upon you now. To your sons, to your daughters, to all in your household, I speak right now. Holy Ghost, fire. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Father, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Father, I thank you right now for a filling of the Holy Ghost right now upon this vessel. Right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for a changed life, a changed heart, a changed tongue. And so now, Lord God, I release the filling of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Be it unto her according to thy word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the fresh feeling upon this mother right now. Lord, it's upon her today. We replace all errors, all darkness, all voices with the power of the Most High God right now. Thank you, God, that this vessel is new and fresh in you. Her words shall be both spirit and life. And I thank you right now, God, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost upon her life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, God. Father, I thank you that there is an anointing and there is a filling of the Holy Ghost that is brewing up on the inside right now. God, I speak an eruption of the Holy Ghost this very second. That which has been bottled up, Lord God, pop the cap right now. Pop the cap right now. Pop the cap, Holy Ghost. Let the fire come forth, God. I feel the Russian mighty wind upon this woman of God. Yeah, God. God, move her. Move upon her now. All right. You guys can go back to your seat. I'm going to call you back. I got something for you. I want this section. If you desire, come on up. This is part of your blessing and your gift today. And you can just kind of on this side and you can come on this side. I'll work the whole area so you got plenty of room. So you can start over here and I'll just work all the way across. No worries at all, all right? God wants to do some great things for you. So let's let me take a few more minutes to be a blessing to your lives. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. And you can just spread them across. Yeah, just, just, just you can walk them around the other side there. That's perfect. Come step, a couple steps forward. Father, I release life right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, God, for Mary's at the altar right now that are birthing fire, that are birthing anointing, that are birthing, Lord God, a supernatural expectation in the wind of the Spirit. So, God, come now, Holy Ghost, upon this vessel in Jesus' name. Lord, birth Holy Ghost fire and a new passion in Jesus' name. We thank you right now. Come on, yes. The Holy Ghost now fire me upon upon you in Jesus name the Holy Ghost is here right now the Holy Ghost is here father birth fire and desire and passion in Jesus name father I thank you right now that what's been old has become new what's been dark has become light what's become broken has become whole in Jesus name and God we thank you God for the fire hallelujah Yes, 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 yes. Father, the fire is here. The fire is right now. And the fire is upon the vessel, upon this altar right now. Be it unto you according to your word, God. Father, let the Holy Ghost burn with a fresh fire, God, and a fresh passion, oh God. Lord, I thank you for new words and a new life, Lord God, that will change atmospheres in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You stay right there. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to work this side so I can come so I know you guys don't crowd together. All right, is that all right? Let me come on this side. All the way over here. You good right there, right here. Come on up, yeah. There you go. All right, now we got it. You guys good? Father, in Jesus' name, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon this mother in Jesus name Lord her words are mixed Lord God with faith and fire and I see the passion of God coming forth new in Jesus name thank you God for the fire and the passion hallelujah thank you God for the fire and the passion right now upon this vessel Lord God the change and rearrange life in Jesus name Lord I release the spirit of power and anointing now in Jesus name Father, in Jesus' name, let there be a fresh wind of the anointing that flows from the mouth, Lord God. But Lord, even in the heart right now, you are making new and you are turning it around. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit now upon this vessel. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that there is an anointing right now. Lord, a fresh wind of the anointing, God. We need, oh God, a fresh filling of your spirit so that we speak, Lord God. Our words are filled with power and anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, I'm coming back over here. Who did I miss? I didn't miss you. God found you. You pressed through the crowd. You bobbed and weaved. And now God said, I'm landing the anointing upon your life. Father, I thank you that fresh life has come right now, Holy Ghost, and baptized with fire like never before. In Jesus' name, God, we receive a fresh filling today. Yes, a replacement, a replenishment, a refilling for all that's been poured out. Be filled in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. I even thank you for the press. I thank you, Lord God, for going through and not giving up. And now you've come to the place where purpose has met the time. May the Holy Ghost be poured out on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let me move slower here. I'm going to come, I'll go right here now, all right? Come on up. Father, in Jesus' name, let there be a new tongue that flows from a new heart. Flowing from a heart, God, that loves you. Father, I speak a fresh fire right now. Holy Ghost, I need you to blow upon her again. <laughs> Father, I thank you. 
And after it's all said and done, God, you still get the glory out of her life. And Lord, I thank you right now, God, that through toil, through heartache, through pain, through much sacrifice, the Holy Ghost is birthing in you right now, fresh fire in this hour. Mother, you are blessed. The Lord said, Mother, you are honored. You are praised for the mother that you are. And the Holy Ghost now is upon you and equipping you for the tasks ahead of you. And so, Lord, we release it upon her now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. 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 Father, I thank you. You make all things new. And so, Lord, I thank you for a fresh anointing upon this woman of God right now. Lord, fill her up anew. God, she's a spirit-filled woman here with the cup that's ready to be poured into. So, God, pour into it now in Jesus' name. Hey, God, pour into it. in Jesus name God I thank you for the wind of your spirit Lord even as you said it came like a Russian mighty wind Father I pray a Russian mighty wind Lord God the wind first that blows the debris away Lord God and then the second wind that comes Lord God with the power and the anointing and so God I release the first wind and God now I release the second wind the anointing of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now in Jesus' name. That your word, God, will be filled in our life, Lord, with power and anointing in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Lord, that you've already equipped this woman of God with power and incredible strength. And so, God, I just add to that strength, Lord God our faith and anointing upon our life, God, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the boldness as a lion to rise up in her, God. I thank you, Lord God, for the meek spirit, Lord God, but the boldness in the heart, God, that'll speak. And Lord, I pray right now that the words that come out of her mouth are anointed and filled with your spirit. That even as the salutation of Mary charged Elizabeth in her womb, Lord God, that the very sound of our voice shall charge the atmospheres around her. And Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Father, I thank you that the anointing and the wind of the Holy Ghost is upon this woman of God now. Father, I breathe fresh life into her heart, into her mind, into her soul in Jesus' name. Lord, let there be right now a refreshing, a new anointing, God, that comes upon her as she speaks, God. She speaks in her words, our power. Lord, atmospheres, cultures, people, things change as the power of the Holy Ghost is spoken through her life. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Father, I release the anointing and the fresh wind of your spirit now to come upon this woman of God. Lord, do it greatly in this hour, Lord God. Fill her to the utmost. Lord, I thank you, God, that the words shall come from a heart flowing with gratitude, thanksgiving, and love. And Father, fill it with power now in Jesus' name. Lord, let those that are assigned to her area, Lord God, be blessed at the very words that come out of her mouth flowing from a heart, Lord God, that is of you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Be it unto her according to your word, God. Thank you, Jesus. Flowing, flowing now, God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak, Lord God. 
through this mind and soul that it be charged with a newness Lord God a freshness Lord that breaks through a freshness Lord God that speaks with boldness and a freshness Lord God that is anointed with the power of heaven Father thank you today be it upon our life right now according to your word in the name of Jesus be it unto her God Father we thank you for the presence of your power here right now Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you are filling her heart, Lord God, and her mouth and her tongue with good things, and she will speak of your praises all the day long. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that this is a handmaid of the Lord right now standing at the altar. And Father, what's been impossible to man is possible with God. And so make it possible by your spirit today, God. Flowing from her mouth, Lord God, is the spirit of the living God. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Be charged. Be filled. Father, I charge this vessel right now with the anointed power of God. Let heaven, Lord God, pour into this earth right now with supernatural anointing and strength, Lord God, that words are spoken, Lord God, from a clean heart, Lord, and a pure mouth, Lord God. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, Lord, that you have broken through, Lord God, barriers, you've broken through limitations, you've broken through doubt, and today, Lord God, we stand cleansed and filled with your precious spirit. Release it upon our life right now in Jesus' name. Father, I release upon this vessel right now Reboche of fresh power and anointing, oh God. Lord, I release upon this vessel right now, Lord God. I, I supercharge her in this hour in Jesus' name. Father, I charge this vessel right now, Lord God, with the power from on high, Lord God, that the words that she speaks shall break chains that the words that she speaks shall open new doors let the baptism of the Holy Ghost now God be fresh upon our life now in Jesus name thank you God for a new anointing upon our open vessel be it unto you according to your word upon our life now in Jesus name Father, I release upon this vessel right now, Lord God, life, anointing, fresh, new. You also be supercharged in Jesus' name. Father, I charge you right now with an anointing, Lord God, that words break through all barriers. Lord, that words, oh God, that are filled with the power of God shall change cultures and lives in Jesus' name. Break through now, Holy Ghost, with the fresh anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, God. Someone shout and give God praise right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your anointing that is here. Upon every mother that's watching. I release the fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you right now. For every mother that's in that listening audience right now, that's viewing me on whatever screen you are, I charge that screen right now with the anointing and power of heaven. Be filled in Jesus' name. And if anyone does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I charge you right now, just say, Lord, forgive me, come into my life. I make you Lord. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you, God, have raised him from the dead and I am saved. I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm living that life of you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a shout. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Those of you that have your communion handy, let's prepare if you're watching. I know the time is beyond our normal, but that's okay. God wanted to bless the mommies today. So I wanted to give the time to the mothers. 
Some mother needed that today. Some mother needed to be charged today. So thank you. stand you can if not that's okay as well but we just reverence the body of Jesus today does anyone not have one we'll make we'll be patient hallelujah all right mothers are you guys good seriously I prayed the Lord told me to anoint each of you there was something about Mary and there's something about you now. And so we thank you, God, for the body today that was broken for us. After they had supped, Jesus had sat with his disciples in that last Passover. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And I want to let you know today that it is broken so that we are whole and healed. And so, Father, we take this by faith today in the finished work of Christ on the cross. In Jesus' name, take it, eat all. The cup, as Jesus said, is the New Testament of his blood. And the Bible clearly says it out. Without the, the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sin. And so the blood was shed so that we could be made whole, so we can be redeemed. And so, Father, we thank you today that as Jesus took this cup and he blessed it, he told them to drink it. It was his blood that was shed for them. And, Father, that blood that was shed for us now gives us the right to the tree of life. And so we drink it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Drink all of it. Hallelujah. Thank God for the body and the blood. Amen. Mothers, you've been blessed double today. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Those that are watching online, we're going to conclude our service with you online. And so I'm going to pray over your seed online. Many of you give, and I always pray over your seed. So if you're giving right now online, I thank you so much. Mothers, happy Mother's Day to you that are watching. I know our service extended today a little bit. That's because the Holy Ghost wanted to equip you for next week, for next month, for next year, for the years to come until Jesus returns. No that even as there's something about Mary, there's something about you that God identified you today. And so I bless you right now to the seed that you're sowing. I thank you, God, that you're going to multiply it. Even now as they're preparing to give online, I thank you, God, that you are going to give back unto them according to their faith, be it unto them. And so, God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So online, you that are watching my TV again, happy blessed Mother's Day. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you Tuesday at 6 p.m. Amen.